for the establishment of friendship on a firmer and more lasting basis. For the promotion of brotherly love. And kind feeling. For the mutual benefit and advancement. Of the interest of those with whom we sympathize. And deem worthy of our regard. We have resolved to form a fraternity. Believing that, thus we can most successfully accomplish our object. Hello, brothers, and welcome to Episode 7 of the Theta Omicron Old Gold Pikecast. I'm your host, Dave Pittman, from the Theta class. With me, as always, is Theta Omicron Alumni Association President Jason Hill from the Alpha Kappa class. Now, with another school year in the books, we're going to meet the new SMC who is coming in, and he's going to tell us a little bit about how Theta O dominated again this year and what he sees in the future for the chapter in the coming season. Jason will fill us in on some alumni events, past and future, and we'll have a special guest that is going to talk about a new alumni event that's coming up very soon. So stay tuned for all of that. Our first guest today is the chapter's new SMC, Braden Murphy from the Delta Pi class. Braden, welcome to the podcast, and why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Thank you, David, and thank you for the opportunity to be a part of PyCast. I know that the active chapter enjoys watching PyCast as a way to learn not only more about the Theta Omicron history, but also the alumni. Um, as you have said, my name is Braden Murphy, and I'm going to be a graduate um, in May of 2020 with a degree in psychology and a minor in coaching education. However, before I reach that graduation date, I will be spending the next year as the Theta Omicron SMC um, with the hopes and desires to only further better the greatness and the men that come through those chapter doors every Sunday and leave at the end of a four year um, tenure inside the chapter as better men. Um, but a little bit about me, I did graduate from Lebanon High School in Lebanon, Ohio, which is just off the northeast side of the Cincinnati Tri-State area. I am also a fifth generation college student um, with my great great grandfather actually attending Indiana State a long, long time ago. And I, I find it crazy because when I was looking for schools, Indiana State was not one at the top of my list until my grandfather said, you know, you should probably check this school out. Uh, you've actually had some family blood go through it. So uh, through a long story short, I ended up here at Indiana State, and I've only been further affirmed that I made the right decision uh, by coming to this university, by meeting all the great people um, and all the wonderful things that this university has given to me. Before I leave, I really want to make an impact um, on Sycamores that will last more than just the four years I'm here, but after I'm long gone. Um, so through student government, I really have put a lot of effort into that. So I will be continuing my work in student government on top of being the SMC. Um, however, also in my lifetime here at Indiana State, um, I've been an RA in the residential, residential life office at one point. I've spent time in the admissions office, both as a tour guide and as a welcome team orientation leader, um, which I am currently on my third year of doing that this summer. In my time as the SMC of the Theta Omicron chapter, there are about three things that I'm really going to focus on. Uh, the first being family relations. So this past year, the Theta Omicron chapter held a family day for the first time in quite some time. I only look to further expand that um, and further develop a family program uh, for this chapter. I greatly appreciate my opening the Theta Omicron chapter to my family, and I know that brothers will only appreciate that more. Uh, the second item that I wish to develop inside the chapter is that alumni relation piece. Um, one thing that I've noticed both going to Pike conferences and talking to other fraternity men on Indiana State's campuses, our alumni are special. And that's something that no active member should ever take for granted. So maybe developing that relationship piece with the alumni while these members are undergraduates will only further enhance their alum alumni involvement after they're gone. And then the last thing I really would love to focus on is that involvement piece. Sometimes where the focus of this chapter goes is in the involvement piece of that kind of goes sideways. So trying to maybe recorrect and figure out what can we change inside the chapter to help re-engage those members of the chapter is something that I'm really looking forward on focusing on. Um, so those are my three action items on top of all the other stuff that come with being the SMC. Um, I'm only here to learn more about not only myself or the Pi Kappa fraternity, 
but also learn more about how I can help my brothers. I think that's probably the most important thing to me is leaving the position when I this time next year, knowing that what I did in my year tenure as the SMC for the Thetomicron chapter, I did it to the best of my abilities to better my brothers the best way I knew how. Thanks for the updates, Braden. We all wish you great success this year. And be sure to reach out to any of us alumni if you ever need any help or advice with anything. And now let's move from the actives over to Jason, who's going to give us some updates on alumni events. Jason? Thank you, David, and, and thank you as well for all of the work that you put in uh, with these podcasts. Uh, I know it's a ton of work, so thank you for doing it. Uh, just to bring us all up to speed with a few things with the Alumni Association, first of all, thank you a ton for all of your support for Founders Day that we had back in March. Uh, we had two events, one in Westfield and one in Carmel, and every year they seem to be better and better attended. And so thank you to everyone who was able to make it out to that. Uh, and with that in mind, uh, go ahead and mark your calendars now for Founders Day 2020. We're targeting Leap Day, February 29th, uh, to have our Founders Day events. Uh, thinking again, we'll do one in Westfield and one in Terre Haute at 7th and Elm. Those seem to be locations that have been popular. And we would love to add another location as well if it's something maybe on the south side of Indianapolis or northern Indiana. Uh, if there's something in mind that, that you think would work, please let me know. We would love to get as many people involved as we can. And similarly, if you're in another uh, part of the country and would love to just get together with a few brothers in your area to celebrate Founders Day, we would love to have you included as well. So we want to throw a very broad net here and get as many people involved as we can. And with the topic of events, we also have homecoming, which believe it or not, is going to be coming upon us soon. The dates we know, October 11th and 12th. Now the university has announced some changes in just the last couple of weeks. Uh, we know that trike is going to stay the same. The blue and white parade is going to stay the same, but Tent City is changing. And so the current understanding from the university is that what has historically been the Tent City around the stadium is going to go away. The ISU Alumni Association is going to have their tent inside the stadium for alumni to visit. But the organization tents, like what we've been a part of and so many other organizations, that's going to be relocated onto campus. And so we're still trying to figure out what that means for us and organ other organizations like us. But we're trying to take this as an opportunity to rethink our homecoming and what we offer to alumni. And so we would love to get as many of you involved in the planning process as we can. So if you have any interest at all in being a part of the planning, for this, please reach out to me. Uh, my email address is there on the um, on the slide, jason.hill1 at gmail, or ping me at Facebook. Uh, we would love to get your ideas, and we want this to be as successful as possible. We're thinking, you know, maybe a, a brunch kind of after the Blue and White Parade, or maybe some sort of a dinner that would be on Friday night or Saturday night. And so I'd just love to get as many people involved as we can with that planning process. Now, another uh, final uh, thing to discuss is contact information. This is always a big push for us. And so we're going to make another big push this summer. It, two things. One is if you have a brother that maybe you've fallen out of contact with, one of the things we would love to do is to try to reconnect you. So somebody that maybe you used to spend a lot of time with, time has passed, uh, feel free to ping me. And if we have their contact information, we'd love to pass it along to you. Secondly, getting your contact information. Even if you think we have it, would you take 30 seconds and send me an email um, or ping me on Facebook if that's what you prefer. And just let me know your contact information, your home address, a phone number, and an email address. That would be just enormously helpful to us. And we'll communicate that as well to the university and the international fraternity so that hopefully it's as easy of a process for you as you can and you won't get pinged by a lot of different people, we'll do some of that back-end communication uh, for you. So thank you all for your continuing to support the podcast, and thank you, David, for putting it together. Jason, thanks very much for telling us about these events and especially for organizing them. I know you put a lot of work into it, and it really shows. Guys, I highly encourage you to join as many of these events as you can. I was fortunate enough this year that I attended Homecoming and Founders Day, and I had a blast seeing some of the guys that I hadn't seen in years and meeting some of the newer fellows. So please come out, join us, have a great time. 
Now, here to tell us about a new event on the Pike annual calendar is Ryan Sullivan. Over to you, Ryan. Hey, thanks, David. Um, yeah, we're excited to host the inaugural Pike Family Picnic. You know, June 30th, the Bridgewater Club Pavilion up in Carmel will be hosting the inaugural Pike Family Picnic. Really excited. I think it'll be a great opportunity for brothers to reconnect, meet some newer brothers, um, and just share in the bonds of Pike Kappa Alpha. Um, you know, and I'm really excited to be able to participate and contribute to the Alumni Association this way. Um, I think like a lot of guys, um, I graduated and went and focused on other things and got pretty distant from the chapter, um, but knew that I um, wanted to reconnect, didn't quite know how, reached out to Jason earlier this year, and uh, he was great about getting me involved, pitched this idea of doing a summer uh, summer event, and we started with a volleyball tournament, and uh, I was pumped for that because I still enjoy playing volleyball. Uh, so we started reaching out to some other brothers, seeing what their interest would be, if it was something they would want to do. Um, through some of those conversations, got some really good feedback. Um, I was like, dude, I just don't play volleyball anymore. Um, if you're going to just hang out and get together, I'm all about that. And um, that really resonated. Um, you know, I've got a one-year-old and my wife is afraid of flying objects. So, um, you know, getting into the stage of life that I'm in a volleyball tournament is not a great idea for my family. Um, but uh, just an opportunity to get to with brothers, um, bring their partners, spouses, kids, um, you know, so we can really evolve the alumni association and take that fraternity experience into the next stage of, of life for people. So yeah, we're just really excited to get to do this. It's been awesome to get to work with um, guys like Sam Lewis and Glenn Skinner again on fraternity stuff. So uh, that's been a huge perk for me. And I think we've got great momentum with Founders Day and then obviously the tradition of homecoming. So just having a, another event in the summer um, that you know, we put on consistently, I think is only going to strengthen the bonds. Um, and enable us to better support the active chapter and each other as alumni. Um, so again, thanks for hosting PikeCast. You know, thanks for letting me get on and shout out Pike Family Picnic. Um, you know, June 30th, Bridgewater Club Pavilion up in Carmel. I've got a great uh, park, little playground area, some basketball courts. We're still going to do volleyball. Randy Moat's going to help coordinate that, so you know it'll be well done. Um, bring cornhole boards. We'll have a spike ball set up. Um, should be a great time. The uh, Alumni Association and the committee are going to provide some meats, bring a side, bring a dessert, bring some drinks. Back in our day, it was Keystone Light. Whatever you want to bring, we'll have some coolers available. Um, just excited to, to get the brothers out there. I think it'll be an awesome day and look forward to seeing everybody. Thanks for organizing the picnic, Ryan. I'm sure it's going to be a great event and I look forward to seeing you, spouses, little kids, uh, no flying objects, uh, but a great time out there anyway. So thanks very much, Ryan. Brothers, that's it. Thanks for watching another episode of the Old Gold Pike Cast. I hope to see you at the picnic, at homecoming, Founders Day, and just anytime if you're in the Indy area and want to connect, meet me for uh, a beer or anything. You know how to get a hold of us. Until next time, booga booga.